know what I don't understand about this engine is I don't get any joy. The Ferrari, no the Ferrari flag. Whatsoever that it's going to start, no. Schrager. Is that the ARF or the... Uh... The ARF, yeah. Look at this, the dog is chasing a plane. See, number one, you're not supposed to have dogs off leashes here. But of course, these are the people that complain about us making noise here. Their dogs aren't on leashes. And as Rich is flying, the dog is chasing a plane back and he doesn't understand how a circle works. Notice he's not on a leash now. Dogs are supposed to be on leashes. A big sign, giant sign as you come into the park. I know. Now I always think if somebody's your house guest and a uh, good friend, you should put them to work. Now Elliot, two hours ago, started putting line reels together. Look, I thought he was going to do hundreds. I thought I was going to have the twin towers of line reels here today. What do I got, 10 reel? How many did you make, 15? I got, I'm gonna fire him, <laughs> he's laughing. You know, if you worked for Joe K right now, you'd be, you'd be on the bread line. Yeah. But let me see, this is why we keep Elliot around. Check this out, now John Pothier took, let me see if I, I don't know if you're even gonna see this. Yeah. John Pothier took this picture, mm -hmm. and you see all the oil stains on the parking lot? Uh, the color correction is not really perfect. And we want to make a poster. One of my, if you look all over to sell it, there's all these top five posters everywhere. In fact, some of them are hidden, obscured by uh, the TVs and VCRs and stuff. And there's the difference. But, but we have 18 of them. There's and the, the, flip yeah. it so we can see the... There's the, the before. Okay. And there's the after. And the after? I got to get the phone. That's Billy Hummel calling back. Bye. Now just make it flip back and forth. Oil stains? No oil stains. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we could just take Brett Buck and, and replace him with, uh, <laughs> with the Pillsbury Doughboy or something? <laughs> uh, anyway, no, no kidding around. Congratulations, Brett. We're just kidding. And uh, I'll have to look at your face now for a long time in this picture. Unbelievable. That great job from John. Now we're going to send out to have the poster done. Part six. So this is unbelievable. What, what a production line we have going here. Unbelievable. So how long do you want to stay on this? Now the birthday party isn't for another hour. Yeah. Let's see, it's not till six. And, and so I'm, in an hour, how many line reels can I expect to see here? Probably about another three. Three more? <laughs> wow, and he's got all his tooling. He's got the Ferrari emblems. Look, I even gave him a gallon of soda to drink. I thought maybe the, the caffeine would perk him up. Yeah, but it's no caffeine. It's caffeine free. That's oh, it's caffeine, thing. you're right. That picture John did is going to come out nice. We're going to make a nice yeah. poster. I got to think of a spot to put it. We got all these chicky pictures here. We need to, we need to redo this whole shop. I think we need to. Where can I put that poster? I don't know. Yeah, you, you could do with a, you could do with a tidy up. There's bigger one. shop. Yeah. Not that the answer is bigger shop. I'm going to send you some nice images of the planes that I built. You've got a few of Paul Wendy's. I need a bigger I shop. Okay. So we're having a birthday party tonight for Wendy. He's 61. My son and, and his girlfriend drive up here. <laughs> Their car won't start. They got a dead battery in a relatively new car. <laughs> Blocking me in from flying tomorrow, too. We got the grill going. 
All right, here we want to sing happy birthday. Elliot will lead the, lead the choir. <laughs> happy birthday. Oh, you guys are so bad. Come on, everybody, come on. Happy birthday to Wendy. Happy birthday, dear Wendy. Oh, this is, hey, what are they doing in the pond? What's going on in the pond? What's going on in my pond? The fish are mating on my birthday. This is terrible. I can tell. Look at a plant wiggling around. They always mate by the plant. Well, we had the birthday party to live and die for. In fact, I have an extra birthday cake. The kids brought me an extra cake. I didn't even get it on camera, but here. Brian's already flying, and we're going to work Elliot like he's a mule today. And then we're going to pack and go up to Midgley's. Oh, look at these. Look at these. These snakes in the grass here. Check this out. Look at the Tavio. Where's the Tavio? Sitting down. See what happens. Brian has to go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, so he gets the first four complimentary flights. All right, let's unload. So one of the things we're going to try, what would you get these props from Rich Oliver? Rich Oliver. Rich Oliver had some fur. Look at that nice flag. Ooh, Jim Smith, thank you. Rich Oliver had some, they're 11 fourths. Thunder Tiger props we're gonna try on Elliot's Arf. We got a half a dozen of them. He balanced them up. One of the things we wanna try today, we wanna work on Elliot's pattern before we go up. But tonight, we have to eat our second birthday cake. I really do have a whole nother birthday cake. We're gonna load up. And it's off for our main vacation. We're gonna, we're gonna probably make a separate video and I'll give everybody a free copy, of course. Of our, uh, we got some cool stuff planned on the way to Maine, but uh, so far the weather looks good. We're kind of excited about getting ready for it. We waited a long time. Karen's done a lot of planning for this vacation, but the first part of it is going to be Dave Midgley's contest. And of course, we have to before we leave, we got to figure out what's wrong with this stupid sob that we have. Even Brian, who's a car mechanic, said sobs. Forget it. I think we're going to be in for paying a lot of money to get this thing running. But save that prop. That prop was working okay. Just check the balance when we get home. Because at this field, you see how it picks up stones at the tip? Yep. Really makes a mess. This, this field is, and that's why we made this runway, which is a lot better. But if you drive off the end, it's really all full of little sandy, gritty, stony kind of things. So it's one more day, and we're off to, to Midgley's to Hampton. And Elliot has promised me he's going to do, do some major improvements on his geometry today. Major. Forget it. Man, it looks like we got a little bit of air coming up here. So we'll see if Elliot can learn anything about flying in the wind. Where were you last night? Rich is really happy with the way he's got this motor running. If you remember back on the last, oh, maybe two or three videos, all he was doing was trying props, trying props. He finally got one with the right load and, in my opinion, just a little bit too much pitch, but he seems to really like it, and that motor is really coming on and off, giving him the run character he wants. So I think in the last month or so, Rich has really put some valuable technology to use. And he's got, believe it or not, a spare prop now. So, so make all the difference in the world. The day you chip the prop, 
I'm glad you have that spare prop ready to go. And we are just itching. I know Rich is itching. He's got the wings sanded out and ready to do the glassing. The next step is the glassing. We, we can get a hold of Les and Les wanted to do this experimental glassing technique. He's got his plug-in landing gear on order. And that may, that may be something we want to do in the future too, is have those plug-in type of landing gear. That may work. A lot, of, a lot of things coming up in the next year that I'm excited about. But most important, the Strega Arfs. And getting that Rojet 90 in one. Now we've looked all around for a test plane and we really don't have an appropriate one. There's been a couple offers of planes that are 90 plus ounces. And they're not gonna give us what we want. We, I'm trying to get a plane that's well, 70 or in that range. And then I want to see what it's going to take to shoehorn and shorten that nose moment. We're going to have to make a special tank to fit in a short nose. All doable stuff, but I know Rich Oliver's straining at the bit too. We want to get, and we'll definitely have it on video. That will be an interesting project somewhere, somewhere in the future. And just as a side note, a lot of people have been asking me about when are the ARFs coming, when are the ARFs, the Strega ARFs, you know, this is something none of us, even John Brodak, none of us have control. They, they do them when they do them. They don't have deadlines, they don't have, uh, it's not like, not like you're building a million dollar production line of cars or something. They basically, in small lots, they come over by container load, it's an involved thing to get them, just to get them shipped is involved, so. But we, we have been told that a, a reasonable time is gonna be about the end of September, and it won't really matter, because even if we get ours, we'll be out here in a snow flying it. We are gonna be flying. That 90 is gonna get some wear and tear on it, one way or another. Look at the air density today. We're up almost 94. And boy, does that make for some for some fun flying. Motors seem like they've just gotten about a third bigger in displacement and we're running 40% nitro. It's unbelievable. That air density, air density this morning, Cal? Anything over 90 is like heaven. It's like supercharging. We'll see what it is when we get up to Dave's. Dave's been getting days over 90 too. Ooh, I like that, John. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm glad you're flipping and not me. There we go. I do, I do, don't worry, Bimbolinis. What a guy.
You might notice Elliot hasn't bothered sanding down the fiberglass. You know, if you grab it by that fiberglass, it's like razor blades up there. Now this is the original ARF from, that we made the video from, that we've basically, a lot of people have looked at that video. A little too rich, yeah, a little too rich. What Elliot's trying to do is learn how to modulate it so it's not a, a full down or a full up, it's just going in and out a little bit. And yesterday he had good success. I don't know, today we're gonna see what he can learn. And we're gonna hope he can get, he can learn a vertical eight before the day's over. Our goal is vertical eight. It's first vertical eight. Woo! This woman doesn't seem that impressed with Elliot's vertical eight. I think the most fun I ever remember is actually learning one maneuver at a time. And he certainly learned a new one today. Vertical eight, Scott. Now Rich has been giving Elliot some coaching in between rounds here. He's doing a pretty, actually he's learning. I think he's gonna be able to do multiple vertical eights before this day is over. Multiple vertical eights. I'm so impressed. You just think if you learn a new maneuver every day, 16 days later, you know the pattern. Excellent. Elliot, we're proud of you. Once again, it proves why it's worth fixing these planes and keeping them in service. There's always somebody that can use them for a learning tool. Well, this is the part of the trip we all love. Packing up the car. John DeTavio is gonna take Elliot's stuff up. I'm gonna take the Spitfire. Hopefully we're gonna get some more time on Doran's three-bladed props while we're up there. We're gonna have this great vacation in Maine, but we got a special treat. Jeff Stifel stopped by just before lunch with a real surprise. Anybody that lives in the New York area knows what these are. Giant tickets. Hey, and thanks to Jeff Stifel, Elliot and I are going to go to the Giants-Chiefs game tonight. Have some pizza at Frank's Pizza, head out to the game, and then tomorrow it's the big drive up to Midgley's. Now, we have another little surprise. My son and his girlfriend brought over a cake last night, and since we already had one, we didn't eat it. John DeTavio and I are going to eat this tonight. Wendy Spielberg. Now the joke is, years ago, it was, it was Craig's 18th birthday and I had made this little fake Steven Spielberg thing with uh, some cartoons in it that I drew and everything for Craig. But now he gets to put me in a barrel. I'll tell you, this, this cake looks good. This is one of these great ice cream frozen cakes. Well, we're heading out to Dave Midley's. Drop Elliot off at the airport. It's a long story, but he had to complete a part of his flight to get the flight back to San Francisco. And we're 
you know, looking at the beautiful Tappan Zee Bridge on what looks like it's going to be a beautiful travel day. And five, five and a half hours from now, we'll be in Hampton, Mass. Hampton, New Hampshire. downtown Hartford on the way to Midgley's. Here's where Dave has made reservations at the Galley Hatch for a nice communal dinner tonight, but we're headed into the hotel. Beautiful downtown, a beautiful day in August in beautiful Hampton, New Hampshire, home of Dave Midgley, Dave and Sharon Midgley. Oh, we always like this little place in Hampton. We always stop in here, in fact. They have some old muscle cars out there today. 427 Ford, Chevelle, some old stuff. Tracy car. Yeah, inside it looks like the rumble seat. Yeah, they got some cool stuff inside too. I'm sure Rich Jack of Bones is gonna want to stop here. Look at the muscle cars they have. 427 T Bird, yeah, they got some Buicks up here, old Buick. Anyway, we'll be coming back here later. We're gonna check in the motel. So we're down here at the motel. Rich is already here. Les is here. And the only problem is we got to go stake out the field tonight before we go to dinner. Yeah, they're playing. See, we were supposed to meet Dave down here to stake out the field. I don't think that's going to happen. But we'll hang out and see. There's, there's quite a few kids. Even if they started leaving now, I don't think. Well, we'll have to see what Dave wants to do. But apparently, they do have a pretty good showing of field hockey. They got, they got four games going on at once here. So after about two hours, everybody shows up. The stakes are all pounded in. All we got to do is run the wire tomorrow to yellow. Oh, there's Richard. The field's all staked out. Les is up here with his vet doing wheelies. Now we always have a, ch a choice. This is our uh, the hotel, Hampton Inn, where we stay. We always have to make a big decision. Do we want to eat in the eatery, which is a real nice place? seating some of the flowers and everything but we always choose to go to the airport not sure why that is look at the flowers everything seems to grow so nice up in New England and we're only down the road maybe a thousand feet and we're at the Hampton Cafe combination airport and cafe this is not exactly Newark Airport in fact it's all grass but what a great little place, a little throwback place. A lot of times they're working on fabric covered planes, rebuilding engines, or there's biplanes here. Every time we've been here, it's something different. A lot of times uh, Elliot or somebody will rent one of the planes. Carlos has rented a plane and just done his thing. Hey, oh, I see some cubs already. That's what you typically see at this airport. Old insignia logo with a Piper Cubs. What a great little place this is. What a find. And it's it's right down the road from the motel. Just get a look at how quaint is an old school bus and they do they do use it for storage. There's some of the hangars they rebuild the planes in. Maybe if if they're out here later, that's it's obviously a club of some kind. Thanks. 
Where's your keys? Don't have them. What do you mean? I walked. What do you need? The van. It's here. Okay, everybody's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed here. Bob Brookins flies in from Iowa. How's the flight, kid? What was my little email about about some paint that you didn't have that yeah, John real, wanted? Real serious. John wants it. Okay. Apparently, did he have an email that no. uh, you, you didn't have very much left 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 left. I have none. We have less. So so left. Painted a car with it. Color was coming. Hello. You notice the shirt? Edgewater parrots. These are the parrots we have down there. You can buy it online. Edgewater Hill. Nobody knows about them. Yeah, we do. There has to be. There was an article in the record. Edgewater Windy Parrots. That's what you should get. We got them by our field. I know. But what I'm saying is you should get know about about the parrots and a few from Cliffside Park. I'll get Brian to catch one for me. Overlooks. Now how cool is this? Check this out. They're all having breakfast here on the deck. And we're getting to watch touch and goes. Guys going for rides. Elliot, are you going to take a ride later? Cheap! Where's, does it come in and out today? He's, he's not probably, I think the guy that flies it is in there. It's usually parked right here. I know what it looks like, yeah. I haven't brought it out yet, it's in one of the hangers. Over in We're going to try to get Elliot a ride in, in any of these planes, I don't care which it is. But just about two miles from here is a private strip, and uh, I belong to the Ultralight Club. Where is the ultralight field? They won't be doing anything today or tomorrow? Uh, yeah, there's no real ultralight fields. And, and, uh, I also have the, uh, the two-person frame. Yeah. All right. I bought the two-person. Buddy has. I don't know if it's a six-shooter or not. Tell me, this isn't a cool little place to hang out. Brookins comes all the way from Iowa. Hey, Bob, is this worth it or not? It's cool, huh? You gonna paint a car for me today? Let's paint John DeTavio's van red while he's up in a plane. Yeah, that's a fun thing. We had, we had, yeah. I'm still a member of the club, but I have uh, one. Guy going up now? Yes, my daughter. Is your daughter flying? Yep. Now, what is that, a 47 Cub? No, that's a 46. That's an Aronka. Aronka champ? Okay. 1946 champ. What we're trying to do is arrange with the guy. The biplane's not out here. But they have a, uh, a biplane that gives rides. So we're trying to get Elliot a ride in a biplane. I've got spins in there. How, how cool is this? Okay, they're coming to get the, the final decision is Elliot and Woody are going for a ride. And it is stunt heaven out here. Now look, how cool is this? How cool is this? Only in Hampton, New Hampshire. Elliot, first you get to go to a giant game, then you go on a bike plane. Oh, Monday you go going kayak. <laughs> You're going Monday when I'm going to Maine. Look at this. Oh my God, check it out. Woo! Don't be a baby. <laughs> Come on, get your ticket. Get the hell over there. There's no parachute required. Are you coming? Come on, Woody, let's go. What do you mean? Let's go. Come on. Come on. 
What do you, what do you, oh, it's got to be airborne? It's got to no. come back up no, I mean, I mean, we're going to be doing some stuff. Woody, they have bags stomach for you in the plane. You've got to wipe the food off your mouth. Uh, he wants it to look good. See, now only a friend would tell you Come on, even Ken Tyser went for a ride. Did you go for a ride in a biplane in Muncie, Rich? No. Just Ken Tyser? You went more. Uh, me, me and Kent went, okay. Breakfast, yeah, I left you. half of mine on the table. Give him a bucket. <laughs> Put a bag over his head. Here we go, John. They just had breakfast. They just had breakfast. That's all right. This is so smooth. Oh, no problem. It's going to be a nice morning party. Now, the guy in the blue shirt has never parachuted yet. <laughs> Let me take a close look at this. Come on, Elliot. In your lifetime, the stupid government will figure a way to outlaw everything, yeah, including biplanes, that's for sure. You're on the tail end of this, baby. Just waiting for our government to find some way to outlaw everything. Look at this engine. Hey, look, here's the fuel gauge up here. Looks like the fuel gauge. Yeah, that year Kent and I went right at, in Muncie. In fact, we went on our way to the banquet. <laughs> it's sick when we were at the banquet. Ah. Is this gentleman the owner? Uh, I'm not sure who's the owner, but well, we know the pilot was the guy who drove over here. What do you think, it, do you think this costs? These guys too. Oh, yeah. Gone. Oh, look at Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey post. Pose, pose for control line world. I don't know how they ever talked me into this. But that's okay. oh, well. Don't worry, Woody. You have a parachute. They have you give you a parachute. Get two milk cartons to get up on. Come on, be a man. Just go. Look at some of the fabric work here. Look at this, the stitching, the stapling. Get a little. Yeah, get a picture, by the where it says inverted thrill ride. <laughs> Who's got a camera? Hey, Will, you got a camera? Will, you got your camera here? I have a still camera, actually. Yeah, I should have. Yeah, Polsky's got a camera. Yeah, Polsky, oh. Oh, get Yam yeah, Polsky to get the picture out here. You can freeze it from your uh, DVD. <coughs> freeze it. Just grab it. Yeah, yeah. Take a wild guess. <laughs> Listen, you lived a good life anyway. What are you complaining about? We need your money anyway. <laughs> The big one on the outside. <laughs> Made five miles from my house, Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, part of it. The better singer is going to be on the left. I guarantee you, he won't know you're there. There you go, now you got him. He's got the camera. Oh, look at Elliot's head. It looks like they're smuggling watermelons in from Mexico. Woody, you're a handsome devil. Snoopy. Snoopy, yeah.
Elliot and Woody going for their first biplane ride here at the Hampton Airport. Just waiting for some of the, the private stuff to go up. Tails up. Is that a CB? No, it's a Buccaneer. A modern, it's a modern seaplane. Yeah. Wow. All right, we're sitting out here having a cup of coffee. They're back. I think they went up around the ocean. <laughs> Flying very gently. Oh yeah. It's slow. That wasn't a half hour. Maybe he's not. No. No, it looks like he, maybe he's a little touch and go. Today is coming in. That wasn't a half hour. Maybe half an hour by the time you get into the airplane. <laughs> well, gas price is up. Yep, he did. Look at that. Look at that. How do you slow? Do you have brakes on, the, on an airplane like that? Mm, I'm not sure. Oh Obviously, World War I planes didn't have brakes. That's why they had a tail skid. Oh, to slow them down. Yeah. Oh, and really? they, when guys make a repro of a World War I plane, That's they and they put a tail wheel on it, it doesn't land good. I thought it would slow the plane down. That's why you never see the plane. Ah, ah, ah. They had a kill switch, they just keep burping the engine. Oh, come on. Don't it. Yeah, they kept shutting the engine, all old folkers and stuff. You didn't have a throttle on that? No, no, no throttle. On off. On off. Oh my word. And you know, hey Will, on some of the folkers, the crankshaft stayed on the plane and the motor turned. A Foker D7? The, the cylinders turned and the crankshaft okay. stayed hooked to the plane. The, radial motor. the prop and the radial engine turned at one time. Let's see how these guys did. Oh, they're not barfing yet. So you had a lot of torque. Well, you go to Rhinebeck. You should take your wife to Rhinebeck when they have the show. They have all the World War real repro planes and some real ones. Wow. Real nice show they put on a couple times a year, two or three times a year. Incredible, huh? They have broken the bonds of Earth. How was it, Elliot? It was terrible. Terrible, huh? They didn't let you fly it? All right, off to the field. Now this is what you have flying right over our hotel and over the flying field pretty much all day. They do banner towing out of here. Very, very neat little, I think a really special little place. And, and as I've said before, it's only a matter of time before somebody comes in, buys the airport, puts up condos, and then these kind of little places are disappearing. Like, it's just a sad thing to me that we're losing part of our heritage like this. We are there, and the field is in great shape. And from here, the Ferrari flag is flying. 
with about a five mile an hour breeze. The field's in great shape. Actually, the football teams we anticipated might be here, the soccer teams, they aren't even here. And the sun is just peeking behind the clouds. And the people are starting to roll in already. We got about 25, 30 people here already. I'm going to go down that end, I think, oh, right. where they are. Good. Okay, good. 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 I guess it's two. Good. 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 Down there. Huh? You want to create a plane? down there, I told him he could fly my airplane. He don't have no airplane to fly. Uh, he can fly my rally. Fly? Huh? He can fly my This is Will Moore's electric nobler. Can you flip that over, Will? Let's see what you got here. Give me the show and tell thing. Some kind of fancy paint, Bob Brookins paint. Changing color in the sun paint. There's the nose end. This is my battery compartment. Battery. Same batteries you were using basically last year, same motor and batteries or Correct. similar? Yeah. Okay. This just fits in like this. You can still move the battery around to get the CG where you want. All the way back here. Okay. And this just closes back up again. Nice, nice. I like how the cowl worked out. That's pretty good. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's interesting. It's cool. That's very good. And you get plenty of air around the motor that way instead exactly. of having that little, the trough or whatever you call right. it. And what the air blows through this and then comes out here. Yeah, Mikey Palco's is similar. So that allows you to cool the battery as well, you know, okay. inside. And what kind of paint is this that it changes color this like this? This is that uh, Ultra Coat uh, stuff. Oh, okay. It's ultra Coat. But the body is just is painted. Okay. I got some Ultra Coat trim here. I, I had to do it because the, it, the, the chameleon look is incredible. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I thought Bob Brookins had painted a plane. Yo, he's a, he's a motor paint that does this. Yeah, he's got it. It's real expensive. Very expensive, yeah. Yeah, that's very nicely done. That's working good. Now you're in a lineup. We'll get this flying later. Yes. Okay. You want me to fly that for you? Well, I want to videotape it when you fly it. Okay. I'll see how it goes. Um, they got a good turnout here today, and it's not even contest day, so. I can. Uh, I can get in line here and fly. Boy, they got a good turnout early in the morning here, baby. Nice day, I hope this stays this way all day. Rich has his grass gear on. I think it's really neat the way Will did that cowling, that's kind of cool. Kind of unique. We're gonna try to get as much as we can on video today, of course, but uh, overall, as always, it's two circles. Rick Campbell's flying on one. We're going to go to the back. Some of the guys are already on the back circle. We marked this off last night. The field is clear. There's nobody else here. And the Ferrari flag says it's a great day to fly. Bob Brookins got in here, flew into Manchester last night from Iowa. He, needless to say, is a uh, professional car restorer, customizer, painter and has his own shop, of course. His wife, Elaine, does the upholstery and interiors. Now, one of the things he's gonna be doing is picking up Woody Midgley's mom's car. She's in her 90s, doesn't drive anymore, but has a car, and I don't know what year it is, a car that's only been driven by a little old lady in her 90s kind of thing. 
So I think Bob is gonna do some restoration on that or painting or whatever. Who's down the back circle now? You can get a little layout of the land. We're on the back circle. Rick Campbell just put in a flight. Tonight, if weather permitting, we're gonna have a little uh, party cookout on the beach. Right, we're right on Hampton Beach. The Cubs and biplanes have been flying over all morning. And the Ferrari flag is flying. And this is just looking like it's gonna be a very special weekend, but it always is. Hampton is one of our favorite contests. Now I hope you enjoy sharing it with us. Not only the flying, but all the little personal stuff too. It is a very, very special little place being up here. Hey! Is this contest going to the dogs or what? So where's the motor? Oh, yeah. the motor is this a glider or what? The motor's on the um, on the, on the prowler. I got a sweater swapping out later on today, hopefully. Did you fly this? I never flown it. Oh, it six I... years ago, I never flew it. So I got into my prowler and I never I never flew it. So maybe you today I messed up. The landing gear is too low, so you got to do a hand launch. You can't. Well, you got enough guys to hand launch. Yeah, you could have to hand launch it. So, well, let's see your new guys. This is this, a red. Is it, it's turning camera up for a minute. <laughs> is this uh, refinish or a brandy new? It's refinish, actually. Refinish, yeah. Twenty-one years old. Twenty-one. It's a puppy. Up the drink. Yeah. Nice. And it does. It's an alcohol drinker, isn't it? Yeah. That looks pretty. Nice. Thank you, Wendy. See you later, Steve. You wanna head out? Are you leaving? I like the instrument panel. Oh, what you want with it? Turned out that's lighter than a wooden one. <laughs> see you later. Wendy. Should have made carbon fiber. Hey, see you later, Bob. See you later, Dad. Nice see you pilot. Bob. Yeah, that's pretty cool. This thing was a trip to make. Out of aluminum. Oh, you made, made a... About, uh, I made about 10 of them before I got it right. Yeah. What? Now, what is that? Tubing with a cut in it? Yeah. Or? And you know what? You know what, it, what I tried? I tried X-Acto knives. Cut myself. Didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I tried Dremel tool going all over. Oh, yeah, the place. it catches and jumps up in your face. And, and that, so I kept rebending them and then trying it and trying it right. different times. And then I said, wait a minute, this stuff's pretty soft. And I bent one to shape, laid it on a workbench, hit it with a sanding block, sanded Went it right, right through. through. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a perfect, perfect yeah. Uh, radius. Yeah. yeah, that's that's exactly how it should be, though. <laughs> Good choice. We had a lot of jobs when I owned a machine shop. I'd look at how do you do this? How do you get it in a lathe or the milling machine or something? And then my partner would come up with some idea like, and I'd say, why didn't I think of that? And then I'd realize that's why he's the boss and I'm the, the coolie, you know? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And it was hard to build too. I think Lou Walgast has one too. Yeah, I saw you ready to go there, biplane boy? Well, no, I need the pro help. What are we going to do now? You going to do maneuvers? You going to learn something today? No, Squares? No, Squ oh, are you going to practice patterns? As usual, there's a few Brodak Cardinals, and they all seem to fly pretty good. With This one's got an LA. This one's got a whatever, the, something with a gold head. It's got clamp mounts. Well. They all, they all seem to play. Elliot's got, this is my old original one from the video. Already crashed and repaired. I think it's repaired on this video even. You know, it's funny when you go to Brodak and there's one of these flying on every circle. We, we've had that more than once. Elliot's been with us down in Jersey two or three last days, learning different maneuvers, picking up maneuvers. We did a good repair on this guy. Maybe it'll last through the day, maybe it won't. Nobody knows. The Brodak Cardinals seem pretty durable. Able to take a punch. Anyway, Elliot's going to be practicing, maybe learning some new maneuvers. He's about ready to start doing squares. 
This is what happens basically all day is they're getting buzzed as he's flying over. Elliot's doing the inverted part of his pattern. Pretty neat, I have to admit. This is one cool place. Hampton, New Hampshire, right on the beach. Looks like Les just pulled up with the vet. about the mold? No, not Warren yet. Warren Rich, Jackable. Scoops. We need scoops for next year's project. Some kind of scoops. Anyway, we brought up a bunch of stuff for Dave, and he has, apparently has the mold for the, uh, I think this is his box right here. Nice picture with him, some line reels and DVDs and videos and pictures and other cool stuff. Nice picture from Brodax. He might be dead, we don't know. Okay, well we got plenty. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to try to put some more trim flights on the carnivore. Dave has finished the mold for that spinner that's on the carnivore, which is the same one that's on the Testarossa now. Yeah, those spinners are going to work out great. Twisting sinus. What? Well, I was thinking the, the letters, you know, so the word putt stands out. Make it a white background or something. Because that blue is really difficult to work a lot of contrast with. I don't know if that's, you know, the rig for him. Moore's electric. Just waiting for the timer to kick in. Nobody holding the plane, of course. And it takes off by itself. Yeah, very quiet. Maybe if the plane in the back wasn't running, we'd hear this or not hear it, as the case may be. Will Moore. Yeah. I bet those people down by our flying field bitch about this too. Yeah, yeah, they probably would. You guys are making too much noise. You guys with those model planes are making too much noise. <laughs> yeah, we got some, we got some terrorists down there looking to shut our flying field down. Luckily, they're all illiterate, so we don't have trouble outsmarting them. You know, we, last week, we were at Middlesex. We got to see Mikey Palco's planes fly. Always cool. Now we can hear it, or well, not hear it, as the case may be. If an electric motor runs in the forest and nobody hears it, does it still make a sound? <laughs> if a tree falls on Wilmore's head during his flight, will it make a sound? Yeah, 
Yeah, he'll say, ouch. <laughs> Sometimes there's things you don't want to hear outside the circle. The guys are laughing at you. The guys outside the circle are criticizing your flight or something else. Wow, it looks like you look like you gained a little weight, huh? Man, a lie. This guy ever wear a clean shirt? Holy mackerel. Remember Harold Price and his Oh and, and his God, pants? that pith helmet. Oh. That red pith helmet. And, and, that, and, and his pants. The shorts. The crotch, the crotch was down to his Yeah, feet. he had L.A. prisoner shorts before there were L.A. prisoners. Yeah. Oh, he was funny. He was oh, funny. God bless him. Yeah. He I hope he's funny. in heaven laughing at us right he now. He is. He's probably doing it. Looking good. down here going, oh, let's see if these guys can handle the wind. <laughs> Turn it up. Ah. I know what he'd be saying. Ertnowski. I taught you everything you know, and you're still I stupid. Time in Bridgeport. I said, Harold, you beat his fair and square. I knew it, God damn it. I knew it. <laughs> it was all, I knew it. I knew it. He got cheated out of it. Ah, you're welcome to the world of stunt. <laughs> Remember, I forget the guy's name. It was the judge. His, his son had the toilet. The toilet Cipra. In his, huh? Cipra. Yeah, he had the toilet in his airplane. Yeah, room. yeah, yeah, I remember. They had all those really nice noblers, yeah. yeah. Puts a toilet in the damn car. Yeah. His father said to me, how come he never places? I said, your son's not serious about flying. What do you mean? I said, well, I said, what do you have? The guy, the guy's putting a toilet. The guy's putting a toilet in his cockpit. Said, what that got to do with it? I said, a lot. I said, the judge sees that and forget about it. See, if he had a motor, nobody, he wouldn't hear us talking about him. He'd be thinking, <laughs> he wouldn't hear us critiquing his flight. Well, I've got a touch and no go. Will, your cell phone's ringing. <laughs> it's a little more than a touch, though. I think he peed in the circle. <laughs> That's that guy from Oklahoma. He used to fly a foot off the ground. So I judged him in Dallas. He comes over and he says, what's the matter with my flight? I said, nothing. It was a beautiful flight. I said, you're too low. What do you mean I'm too low? I said, my uh, The book says three to four feet, a four to six feet. Is John going up? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, he's flying a foot. Then he's probably like, I'm the first guy up, man. All right. I'm up there. Ooh. You want one game? Call me. Call him. 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 See what we would do if John, if this woman keeps complaining about the noise, we'll bring some electric charge. We'll bring this. We'll get Palco to come down and then have the, the cops there and say, "Listen to this. Do you hear anything bad?" Then, as soon as the cops leave, we take out Larry Scurinzi's plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, guys, with those model planes. Oh my God, you're ruining the universe. Move them over. Oh my. Over. What are you? Who took my rag out of there? And now you just wait till it shuts off by itself. Wilmore. I had a rag out there. Well, what's cool is we have two biplanes buzzing a field now. I'm not sure which one that is, but there were two going over together before when I was flying. I got to fly Dave's plane, and we're starting a little trim session with everybody here. Now, what we determined is, and, and this is the kind of thing you can do at your field, we lined up Rich Jacobone's plane, which we know is on 68 foot, center of the plane, center of the handle. And this is critical stuff. Then we lined up Dave's plane, pretty much the same, give or take an inch. Then we went to Rick Campbell's plane, which is a 40 plane, and his lines are four, four feet too long. He's on gigantic long lines. We went to, and this is Yampolsky's plane. Yampolsky's on lines that are almost illegal, they're so long. We're on... Every, everybody here was not paying attention to how long their lines are. Now, just as a rough, a rough number, because the conditions are getting breezier and breezier, 68 feet for a full-size plane, possibly 65 feet for a 40 plane, and for a, this is a Brodak-powered chipmunk, we're going to make the line 60 feet, center of the plane, center of the handle. And everybody out there, Dave has given everybody a quick lesson in how to wrap lines and pull tests. So already we've gotten a few things that, that I think are going to have a positive impact on the people in this area to fly at this field. See, this field is surrounded by trees. The air comes over and it's pretty much like our field. Well, the short lines or shorter lines always seem to help. 
So let's say, for instance, with this plane, if you had two sets of lines, one, you want it to fly two feet longer in real nice air, but always have a set two feet shorter. In this case, I'd probably be thinking 65 feet if they're 018s, 67 feet if they're solid. Nobody's flying solids here today. So, and Dave's plane, 68 feet, and always measure. Don't measure the lines, center of the fuselage to the center of the handle. Now that's good quality information. That's stuff I almost never see in print. And that's something, if you're in doubt, measure the lines, or you could shoot me an email with what the setup is. And if you're wrong by a foot or two, nothing bad happens. When you're wrong the other way, with two long lines, you wind up putting way too much tip weight in, way too much nose weight. Plane doesn't track right, you can make a a trim nightmare for yourself. Now Dave's gonna, they're gonna readjust this and then we're gonna start seeing how, what the benefit is gonna be and who's gonna benefit. Okay, so Dave, the scenario is we got two feet off the line. I'm gonna watch the flight. But you gotta tell me at the end of the flight. Okay, we just got a mild breeze here. It's certainly flyable, but we wanna try and they're still cutting lines down here. Still want to try, and, and obviously it's in the eye of the beholder, but I think most people at a field surrounded pretty much on three sides by trees, gonna always benefit in this kind of air where it's a little swirly. The shorter lines are always gonna be a help. And of course, for $10, you can be a big spender and have two sets of lines. <laughs> Now, Yampolsky's plane, the, uh, the Brodak-powered Chipmunk, I think had, had a major upgrade by shortening the lines. Will Moore shortened the lines, and I'm not sure if he has 15s or 18s. He shortened the lines in an attempt, actually, what we're trying to do is just deal with some pretty hawky, unfriendly air. But you can always go back to the long lines in nice, smooth air. But problem is when it's hawky and, and it always turns out that it's hawky when you go to a contest so almost never turns out to be uh, think back how many contests you've been to where it's just like stun heaven a few but not a lot if you were a betting man you'd always bet on bad air and you thought Syria didn't have an army <laughs> <laughs> These kids were all up here. They came in and they were laughing at us before. Ah, I, w I took Karen up to the ladies' room and they said, ah, what are these guys, grown men playing with planes? Be real men and play football. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. You know, it's gonna feel different, so just be safe, fly high, and you gotta make the decision. You know, don't, don't go by what anybody else says. Clear the prop. Clear prop. What do you think of that? Sounds like a sewing machine in heat. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. I like noise. Loud, greasy, offensive noise that aggravates everybody else at the field except the flyers. Okay, let it go. Here we go. Now it kicks in. It's uh, on its own at a predetermined time in the run. There it goes. Those people at Leonia would appreciate this. Oh, I would love to have them call the cops and you come back. You know the cops are on their way, so you get somebody to fly an electric. What are you talking about? What's the, what's the problem? Well, let's see what he says. You and I can be critical, but if it's better or worse for him, let's see. It was it was a little floundery on the first flight. 
Look at that on this dog. Let me see that. Well, I mean, little, a little rich. Real light yeah. three and a half foot bottom. You need to turn it in a little bit. He's still, he's still hunting. He's there, supposed to be docked, you know, if you're below four feet. Paco's electric yeah. hunts real bad, too. I don't know where. Well, Mikey flies dollars. real fast. His plane a flies a lot faster than I think yeah, necessary. The ideal height is five that electric Bearcat that they had at Brodex flew slow, but I don't know if he ever got it trimmed out or not. No, that was, that was the, uh, Did he ever get it trimmed out? Not or? really. Not really. He still had a, a lot of... A lot of uh, this is more like a stunt speed. I think it is anyway, but hey, you fly to speed you like. And he could change out with the prop pitch. Is that a carbon prop on there? You could yeah. do it right at the it's field. A true, it's a true turn. Oh. You can program it in the 100 RPM increments in the motor. Okay. Three blades, uh, two turns. Yeah. Now, I, now, is that plastic or is it carbon fiber? It's plastic. Well, you just buy a different pitch, that's all, if it's plastic. The airplane seems underpowered here. You've got a, a guy working in the kitchen room that'll, that'll open the electrical flow when it changes the load. Oh, really? Yeah. I was talking to Sergey. Not Sergey. What's his name? At the middle side. Sergio. Sergio. Yeah. Sergio. It's not okay. Sergey. It's Sergio. Well, Sergio. He's Greek. Think, think gyro. Think I, I asked him, Malfetta. Can you go ahead and design a battery that will fit in the outboard wing at tip weight yeah. and utilize that battery as a glow star? Oh, so that's a great idea. <laughs> we, 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 Wendy and I had that. Yeah, we were going to we put that in, the, yeah. in a little it's, switch. It's, yeah, a yeah. micro switch, yeah. like what he's got on. Yeah. Little micro switch yeah, to start. Then, I forgot to ask him, this battery, you should have the ability to recharge it. Or to, you know, to switch battery. You put a little plug. Run the charger, put a little yeah. plug in it. Oh yeah, that's not a problem. How many volts? I said, well, I would say 1.7. Because of the uh, voltage drop being the yeah, wire. Right. right. You know? I don't know. I said, you're going to have to be uh, the one to figure it out. <laughs> you know? By the time you get to the glow plug, it'll be one and a half. So he said he's going to work on it. I said, I think you'd be able to sell that. You'd be able to sell that. <laughs> and especially if the battery uh, is about one ounce, one and a half ounce. I got to tell you when you, what did you do? You started the airplane, mm -hmm. and you reached to get the, the glow stuff on the back. Right. No, all I got plenty of room. No, well, you, you didn't see I it. couldn't, I couldn't no, see no. the prop tip. No, no. But to me, I, no. I, 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 I No, I didn't reach in this way. way. I reached over here, this okay. way. All no, right. I got plenty of room. All right. No, I know. Because no. after what happened to Richard Oliver, I started get up and I would go around and take it off this way. So I got plenty of room. Okay. No. As long as you're as long as you're well, this is safe. Back. This is this is safe. This is a good system. I moved it all the way back. In fact, as uh, Noel Grindak said, I don't understand why more people don't do this. I don't mean, use don't use this system. Even yeah. if you have the room, you know, because most of the guys they have the room to get in um, Look at this, now we got double biplanes buzzing the field here every five minutes. Single bipes, double bipes. What a day. John Dave's plane, we're just trying to determine. We're going to run the engine a little faster this time. And then we're going to start trying. I, I think he'd be benefit by having a prop with a little more pitch. I have one for him, and he's got one spare of his own. So we can get all three props tested. Just another thing. The guys that are shortening their lines are all seem to be happy with them. Yeah, and Polsky's really happy with his. And I don't know if Will Moore, Will Moore was just jumping out of his boots happy, so we'll see if all this is gonna pay dividends by the end of the day.
Okay, now I flew pretty much every model here, I think, except Knowles. The, this one, what it needs, the engine was out of shim, the tank is out of shim, number one. That's the first thing we're gonna try to work on. And then we had a little, you had a little, I would take a quarter ounce of tip weight out to start with. But you understand when it, when a motor is that much out of shim, what happens is the side that it's soft, uh, yeah, it rockets in outside like like I was afraid to, to, to keep doing maneuvers. That's why my time is getting Oh, no, and it gets worse because it's richening on insides and leaning on outsides. Glue, five minute CA. I didn't bring any You got CA? Okay, we'll press it into service here. Well, you got time. I'm going to be here, Dave. Let's work on it. Let's. We got nothing to lose. Yeah, you could always see where, the, where that's rubbing, though. You can get a piece of asbestos or, in the worst of all world, some tin foil. Yeah, that's a piece of sheeting. That's not Mike way. Cooper folded his wing. He had the thing rubbing on there, and it just ate right through. There's about that much space. Okay. Okay. You always got to leave the pipe just a little lower. I got to take the whole freaking motor out to get this tank. You got to, of course, motor and tank. Without even asking, Noel Drindak to the rescue. He's got Dremel tools. Windy. Chain I, saw. I got because pictures. That's, that's an organization that. Yeah. Now, when we need says. Whatever you think. Well, we need these are three of these. Sims. What we need is something three times this thick. We can cut this up. Yeah, cut it up. And just put it in the front and back. Hey, Wendy. How about these guys? And while we're working on Dave Eiskin's plane, this is a. A Discovery Retro in an ARF, a ARF score. Kind of a unique combination. Being flown by Rick Campbell. Top flight score. Discovery Retro from the Ukraine. That's a nice nose section, huh? Yep. I was telling him about nice the and neat. Yeah. Tell you about that? Yes. I think you got that one. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, that's nice. Put a little ratcheting pin thing. Right, right. Adjust it up, adjust it down. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't take much of an adjustment to get it really... Look how high that tank is. Yep. It's like an eight, three eighths of an inch. I'd say at least. Yeah, it's wet. Though. You're almost... Yeah, the center's even with the end bolt of the engine. Wow, that's really offset. Whoa. Yeah. Well, most of them are that way, I'm told. Yeah. It's been a long time since I adjusted the tank on a rope. Most of them a quarter or five sixteenths, something like that, right? Just in case you get bored with this, this would make a perfect Rojet 90 test plane. <laughs> I'd be willing to cut you in on half of the pay I get from Rich Oliver. There's one over there you could probably get cheap. I'm talking free. Cheap, <laughs> cheap is out of my price range. Free is what I'm looking for. So what we did is the last four hours of this day, we spent working with Dave Eiskins, tuning his plane. Not sure if any, if we made progress. It's, it's a very difficult plane to trim because of a lot of factors, but we may or may not be making some progress. It's Dave's turn to fly, and we're gonna head out to the field, to the, uh, the beach. So he's gonna stay and fly. We're going out to the beach. So we're at the beach, and if you think live if you think living in New Hampshire is cheap, check this out. A quarter equals ten minutes. Means it's going to be thirty-five dollars to park here tonight, but but it's going to be worth it. And it's a cool evening. The breeze is blowing in. Midgley's already here. The trick is you got to get as many quarters as possible before you get here. Oh no! You pained me, Richard. And then it is nobody, chilly here. Then you, no, do you want my sweater? No, I'll go there. No, it's I'll just nice. It out like the kids' stuff, but not you. Oh, good, good. Well, they, do you know they came over. They came walking over to the table. Do you have a grilling permit here? Of course.
course we do. We're oh, I love this. Look at the shirt. I know. I already said it. Now, why do you think I wore this shirt? For anybody who hasn't seen, look at this. Sharon collects Mickey Mouse. Is that dynamite or what? Is that out of respect for your That's, love of Mickey Mouse? That's pretty nice. Oh, it's just rolling. Rolling? Does he roll in the sand or roll in the dirt? What is he rolling? Hello, my name is. How you doing? My name's Mickey That's Mouse. Rolling in Sarah. Whoa! Yankees got another Yay. ass whipping today. <laughs> what was the score? 13 to 5? Bye bye, Red Sox. Of course. The Red Sox have met defeat at the hand of the Yankees again. Well, you just remember when it counted, who won? Yeah, well, that was only a long time ago. Wait, wait, when was the last Yankees um, World Series? You want to see the Coast Guard? Stuff? I don't see a lot of girls in bikinis out here. I don't know. Maybe it's too Use cold. Your imagination for them. just yeah. on that way. You bet. So the, the uh, surf is rolling in in New Hampshire. Hampton, New Hampshire. Yep. What a beautiful. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Talking to him a few times. We have the wife. <laughs> Get him on video. That's what should be in, in uh, his magazine column. There you go. And all the other. Let me see what you've invented show, here. Show them. Yeah. Show them number one. Station, one. Station one. Station one. Hold on. Dave that. Iskin's going into prop business. Watch, watch out, Doran. Station two. Do Doran's already getting ready to jump now off a cliff. Now watch station three. <laughs> this is a Windy Ernowski pitch gauge. What's up with that, Windy? Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, that's oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a problem. Who man. taught this guy? <laughs> you did. Michael, you're in trouble. That's even cool out here, man. It's nice. Yeah. Open this up. Yeah, I want to see the writing. What? Don't, don't, don't no. drop it. Jeez. When you got your hands on it, man. Hampton Beach flying. Toot that. There you go. All right. What do they got? The shrimp is on the Barbie, or is the Barbie on the shrimp? Look at this watermelon. Oh my God. Oh, oh. But are you learning anything about pitching? No, Look at this. Okay. I'm gonna pitch that prop a little bit. You can really do it with the heat from a tailpipe, but don't burn yourself. All right. Look at these burglars. This is the world of Hampton Beach stunt. Biplane rides, giant games. Like that hat, huh? Now that's a hat. How long does the battery last in that? I mean, it, when you go out for the walk or fly off, it doesn't, at the end of the first flight, it goes there. I didn't take it off myself. That is definitely cool. I like it. Where are those carbon fiber hamburgers you made before? <laughs> these, these are the new, <laughs> the new carbon fiber backplate, lightweight backplate. Oh, Wendy wanted this one. Well yeah, done. Eat that, Pete. <laughs> Wendy says I want it. Well done. <laughs> Look at these sickos. That, that, hey, get away from those birds. What do you think, John? Can we eat one of these? <laughs> no, no, geez, it, <laughs> Seagull you, stew. You can't eat ten things. Get a piece of cake. Throw a banana or something down there. I like my hat. Tide's coming in. Look at it. Covered the rocks out there. Huh? I love hey, that's hat. nice. Come on, Bart. How you going to throw it down there? <laughs> Let's see how it looks on a seagull. <laughs> Let's see how good your aim is. <laughs> Probably more like three. So here's the deal, Ellie. If you go out on that ocean 3,000 miles, you know what you, what you run into? England. Well, I'm not swimming, that's for sure. Yep, but you're only 3,000 miles from home. Look at that. I don't think you count England as your home anymore, though, do you? I count America. Nah, America. That's the way to go, baby. <laughs> this is what happens in New Hampshire when you're behind on your rent. They take your tent away. <laughs> Abdul Midgley takes the tent. We're not closing. We now, after a great night out on a beach, a great 
really nice evening socially. We wake up this morning and as you can imagine, they may be calling the contest. It's supposed to rain all day, but we're gonna go to the airport for breakfast, but I'm not sure that, uh, not sure what's gonna happen today. We'll leave it to Midgley to make the decision, but they're having some kind of hot rod convention in town, and I guess, I guess they'll be canceled too. So we'll see what happens, but it's really raining. Maybe we'll be leaving for our vacation early. Well, even the airport this morning was pet. Obviously, nobody eating outside. Nobody flying open, open seat biplanes. Hey, you good? Want a donut? Have a donut. How did I guess you were having donuts? I thought this was you were on a diet. Yeah, I am. I'm I caught him eating donuts again. Oh my god! I'm gonna back the cars out. All right. All right how are you? Let's make a campfire. Yeah. We, we are. Woody should be back any minute. Yeah. Well, I have no, no vehicle. No, oh, no. Look how did I know Elliot was going to have oh, a donut? Gary, how are you? I'm fine. Oh, nice to see you. If you haven't seen the DVDs of the Build-A-Thon, this is where we have the Build-A-Thon. Dave Midgley's garage, which is between his... It connects his uh, mother-in-law's house to his house, basically. And it's a really nice shop to do some work in. You bet. I know that person. Can you identify this yeah, person? Yeah. Can you identify that. this person? I, Miss Ali again. That's her twin sister. You know this oh young man had a cigar in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and there's her brother, <laughs> Mr. Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes equipped with his own cheerleading session. Yeah, look at these hot women, wow, boy. Wow, hot babes. Woo! In pink. Woo! -wee. Wow, this, this is a great look shot. Look at all these, oh my, oh my god. god, look at these big guys, oh Whoa. man. <laughs> Who's this guy? Joe Adamusco. That, and we got a, looks like a... That's we, Enzo Ferrari, Enzo. came back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wow. <laughs> is that Ken Tyser? Ken Tyser, yeah. Oh, that is an awesome flight. Oh yeah. What's that? You see this fan turning with the wind? Yep. That's sending electricity back through the meter to the power grid. Dave's meter probably is running backwards oh, right now. Right. Go get the, the meter. Let's see if it's running backwards. <laughs> now, what's all this? I don't know what this is going on here. He's got Rich Walbridge's stuff here up here. What's going on? No, no. You stay here, Rich. They're rolling up from the roll of the roll of carbon tow here. We're going to take some. This is flat 50k tow. So we're gonna, you were gonna see if we can make a prototypical landing gear out of this, a fuse gear. This looks like it'd be nice material. We have the round toe, this is flat toe. What about fuel tanks? Nah, it's not big enough. So you'd need this a foot wide to make a fuel tank. No, but we'll make, we'll make some special gear with this. We may need some for the Stuka too. Also right here is the mold for the, uh, the spinner mold for our new carbon fiber spinners. Did you see your did you flip see it. Mold? Yeah, flip it. Let's see. Give me the show and tell. Let me get rid of these guys. Just just roll and tell. We're winding this stuff up. Get out of my way. Okay. It doesn't get any nicer. Does no. No, that's beautiful. Now the bottom comes off so that when you put, you know, when you, you just take the bottom you off. You can pop it. 
Just yeah. tap it. Beautiful. And I'm also thinking if we if we uh, put a shim in here, when you go to put the resin in, you can squeeze resin out the bottom. Oh yeah, okay. But this just. All right, now's your, your female plug. Okay, yeah, the male plug. Squash it. Okay, but the, here's the thing that we should have had: is the is the indentation for the diameter of. Uh, I can make that. Up here. Oh, we can make a jig so we can get it on center. What the hell did you do with that? Look at this. How'd you do that? So anyway, we're going to be, mold, be molding these pretty soon, maybe as soon as we get back, in fact. Because these fit Dave's plane, they fit the They're carnivore. Any two-inch two plane. And you can trim off enough, just, just make a different back plate make a mold for the inch and make inch and three-quarter. Three That's going to look nice. That is going to be nice. Very, very nice. Hard not to like that. Oh, that's my old. Did you clean it? Of course it's clean. Okay. No, I don't, just don't want to lay it by her suitcase or something. No, no, no. Okay. That's good. Put it in a plastic bag if you have one. You got a big bag over there? Put all this stuff in a bag. Well, we go into... Look at... Bring this all in. Yeah. You got this guy all repaired? Yeah, yeah it's repaired as good as it's going to be. Okay. Where's yours? What are the ladies sleeping in this room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell who the women at this Wait, event are. Wait, Wait, you you to Wait, hey. What's the correction? The very first thanks. What does it say? Ken Sleepy Dawson, remember? Thanks, uh, Ken. Yeah, you're remember the Ken, Ken killer. Yeah. You're the, this is the guy that flew into Kenny Dawson. No, oh, yeah. no, Kenny, Kenny Dawson, Dawson is the walked guy that into walked him. into him. He's the one that didn't well, it depends if you ask Lampy Ono or Sleepy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so he felt so bad. Pick it up. Let me see the, the cockpit and stuff. That looks pretty good. By the way, this is a cardinal. Yeah. This is a, this is a cardinal. Nice. He's got, nice. look at the little, awesome. the headphones. This is absolutely awesome. No, wait a minute, hold on. We'll see it this way. So did you weigh this, Gary? Was it way? Uh, 58. 58? It's supposed to lay down on the floor and get an even side shot. Yeah. You hold down to that. That's nice. I'll fly just over there. Color's nice. I like the color. I have a dozen flights on. How'd it fly so far? I raced in one day in a 7 Eleven car, Pro Stock car, with going. I said, no, oh, green, red, white, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a real artist. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I guess I had some blue hanging around. Yeah. <laughs> so I threw the blue one. There's drinks. I like the rivets on a spinner. We're, we're tooling up to make our own carbon fiber yeah, spinners this these season. These are all just, con I didn't want to put any hex head screws, so I put, you know, common screws. And then I got little bitty common screws out here on the LG axis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, up here, you gotta have, you gotta have grass gear. That's crazy if you think you're not gonna have that. I like the cockpit. The cockpit's really cool. I got all kinds of ideas off the Miss Ashley. <laughs> Good. The more you can steal, the better. These are your cardinal ribs. Um, the finish is really nice. Went by the cardinal, the cardinal uh, plans and went with the biggest. Right. Flaps, right. Biggest stand. Biggest flaps will always be the best. I just hope you didn't use ball links. We have ball link itis up here. Yeah. See, his plane would be perfect if it didn't have bowling. He's got no slop at all, so you almost it's impossible to fly level flight. That's why I want to see where the CG is. Get, bring the plane in so I can weigh it. You, okay, an eighth of an inch is good, but he's got none. I mean, you touch it a millionth of an inch and the elevator moves. How the hell do you fly level flight? Yeah, it's good if you never had a fly level flight. See, if you were going to use ball links, you use one place in it, maybe the back or the front, where there's a normal wire where you can put some slop in it. But without that, dead. Dead. And good luck if, if see, if everything is perfectly aligned and the temperature and humidity don't change, everything's fine. But you put it out on a hot day, you know what happens to a door on a rainy Today, I'll bet this is out of alignment, and a ball link doesn't allow that to readjust. That's the problem.
Yeah, that looks good. I want to see where Ice can CG is more than anything else. Boy, I flew that plane about 10 times yesterday. It, it can be trimmed out, but with that motor that's in there. If Woody had a Tiger 60, could loan him, I could have had it done trimmed. You just got to get rid of that motor. That's the first thing. Yeah, that's, that was, that's when I brought it in. I got fillet issues with the paint bubbling. Can you ask Kill and Lindrow? Yeah, you can really, really show it The here. reason the fillets are cracking is almost always that whatever you make them at it, whether it's Bondo, Aeropoxy Light is the lightest, but what happens is then you scuff it with 80 grit. Yeah. And put, just spray in the right in here with an airbrush, Brodac Primer, and sand the primer smooth, but the primer is hooked with a tooth to whatever material is oh, underneath. Oh, that's why you only scuff it with the, like the 80 or something. Yeah. Give it something to no, grab. there's two reasons. All epoxy products dry with a skin of, it's like a waxy skin. They, they just do. That's so that the 80 grit lets it get in there, and the primer is made to bond and not shrink. Yeah. And then you can sand the primer. You actually, the, the fillet itself becomes primer, the last millionth of an inch. Right. And you don't run that risk. Because what's happening here, the dope is shrinking, and it's pulling away from, this This dimension in here is getting smaller and smaller, and as it is, it pulls up away. Right, right. That's the problem with that. Uh, that's my only, probably refinish on this. Some places it's fine, well, it's not fine, I can feel it. Oh no, it'll happen. When yeah. next thing you use air epoxy light, and scuff it, and use Brodac primer, and you won't, yeah. you'll never have that problem. Here. Even the guys that build scale planes, where they, they build big, smooth things around the tail and everything, never have a problem. Yeah. What are you saying? The, the skin that's built up in the uh, epoxy keeps the paint. Step one is to weigh the plane, just the way. Get, get the scale, let's get a weight on a plane. Now we got David Chang, he's good with math. We're going to have to use him to figure out where the mean average cord is on this wing. Okay, mean a figure out the mean average cord right now. Just put it by my, you want to borrow it till next week? Okay, put it up by my bag of stuff, that's okay. No, I like to try the handle. I got the, I took Well, the prop give it to me back next right, week. Got the prop on it. Okay. And, uh, um, you can borrow it till next week. We repitched the prop. I'm going to try this handle again. Okay, All we'll right? borrow it till next I week. I'm to try it with this and then try it with the fan strings. Go back and fail, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll be, I'll be up next week. Yeah, we'll see you at Lee next week. Yeah, step one in any one of these bench trimming things is we want to get we want to get an accurate weight at a plane. This is, and I spent four hours with this yesterday, but it's the problem with the plane is the motor is so wild. It's a 46 VF with a giant Venturi and a little tiny. It had a little tiny prop, and when it would go into a two cycle, it would go 100 miles an hour. It was almost untrimmable at that the way that was set. All you want to know is how many grams is it to start with. What this is Elliot's vector. What he's dying to do is put cardinal decals on a vector. Come on, get those cardinal decals out. Now we set we set the CG at 21 percent. That's where it wound up. Except the plane is the plane is bottom heavy. What? You gotta take the big weights off. The gear, the the carbon part of the gear should weigh an ounce. See where the CG is without the landing gear. Now it'll be top heavy. Okay, now this this weighs over four ounces, so that's take these off. Just fly Just take them off. Take off the wheel pants and weigh them. I get that'll get another ounce off the plane. And put lighter wheels. You got there's lighter wheels than that. How much does this weigh, Dave? Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine? Arf. There's an arf. 
Yeah, that's R. That was a tutor. That's a chain R. In other words, that was a tutor. That A is kind of in parentheses. Almost is a relative term with David. OS four stroke? Yeah, maybe two. Which bit of it is the R? The way. The way. Which bit of it is the R? The way. Wrong here. Now where does this balance? Did you figure the percentage of balance? Twenty percent is a good place to start. Fifteen is nose heavy. Yeah. Mm, it looks nice. Is this is this one you bought off the internet or you made it? I bought the, the R. Right, and then you. Okay. New tail, new okay. okay. I'll tell you, the moon, Steve Moon has his 52 running pretty good. It skips a beat. It has to. See, the only problem. It skips one. There's no compression. David, how do you, do you get any slop in the controls? No, you like flying it like this? Okay. I made the old board too. Well, what that means is it's lined up very well. Ask David, there's a reason for that. I have to. The tip down. Tips down? Yeah. Why did the flap go on? Why did the tab go on the flap and not the wing? I thought the tab went on the wing to make the wing constant. When you go and tip down and give it a maneuver, it goes crazy with an extra flap on the flap, doesn't it? But it will it does. If this one is in neutral, yeah, it gives the outward flap more area. It gives it more area, yeah. But he's got a he's got a flap that needs to go down. So why is it on the top pushing the wing? Even though it's sort of a push. What's that? Muffler pressure? No. He can prime the engine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Put it on, but inside has to be flush. You cut the brass off. Okay, it's flush inside, so it's not restricting anything. Do these have a tendency to run backwards when they start? Or, or do you start it with electric or not? No, hand. By hand, okay. Okay. With this right here, one flip every time. Every time, okay, good. The French, the French. Uh, or did you build it up? The fuselage. That's all, I, I, I built it. It's all brand new. Except for the wing. Wing from here, right there, I use the, the kit. Yeah. The rest of the wing tip, whatever you see. Okay, what, what is the fuselage made from? Balsa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I was wondering if it was... and carbon fiber mat sandwiched inside here. So it makes for some rigidity. Okay, so you have two ball top framework, that's right, and it's two top balls, and it's solid. 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 Oh, smells like burgers cooking, Midgley. No carbon fiber burgers. No carbon fiber burgers today. Carbon fiber burgers. We need a, we need to make carbon fiber back plates here. Yeah, why is it green? Because they originally probably had a glue. Alphatic glue. Alphatic, right. We didn't know what the camera was. This is all You should know better than Is Elliot going to replace the, the whole crush assembly with? Well, he made a. Uh, did you show him the, the carbon fiber cowling you made? All right, there's the crutch. We made the crutch down in my house. All right, what I want to see is. How this, much now, this is made in China, right? Yeah. 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 Nice Mongering. Is that a technical term? Oh, yes. It's all laser cut. Well, it is. So no, no, I see cool. that has to be ground away a bit. What are you shoving in there, Les? Give me a hammer. Cut nothing. Do it Wendy's way. Just shove it in there. What's not to like here, folks? What's that White Snake song? But that road jet fits right in there. Elliot, what happened? How come you couldn't get the road jet in there? It's right there, perk. Let me see how the crutch is. What's the crutch look like? What's wrong with the crutch? Tear it out. We've got to put a new one in it, man.
That's crotch. What I mean by crotch. It's so that I can build a the... miniature cardinal. That's oh, it, right? okay. Yeah. 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 It's so that I can build a miniature cardinal. Very good. How's the crotch? The project fits perfectly under that crotch. Not That's bad, for a miniature right? cardinal. No. I like to start a plane with a crutch, just here. To yeah. make, no matter what plane you make, even if it's a carbon, make a carbon crutch. Now, all this laser cut fits ring. really nice. That I really like this. Everything fits nice. Yeah. This is really nice. You buy all these spools? Mm. It cuts right into the yeah, uh, right right in doublet. So, yeah. where's, where's the Strega? It's coming. It's be exactly the same. Yeah. Probably have the same kids grinding away to cowling and stuff. Did you see this, did you see this wood? No. Let's see. Beautiful. What's next after that? What's this wood for? Oh, this is Elliot's wood? I'm coming. He's got an SV-22 coming. This is it. orders for wood, but only from special people. Soon. I talked to Randy about three weeks ago. Okay, put yeah, that put that in my car. Years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see the tail. Yeah, let's Take the tail out. <laughs> Come on. Pop it out of there. Elliot. <laughs> Elliot. Oh, wait, what was that? That's the fuse. Elliot, if you see Wendy walking over to his car, <laughs> if my car starts floating away, let me see the tail. It's nice and light, Wendy. Look at Dave's plate, right? Yeah. Look at Jack's plate. Nice job. He monocoated it. Bad, man. And it still mm. looks great. That's actually. These out of take, the take this out of the bag and weigh it. They gotta be Let's go. Come on. You know, every everything's light till you put it on a scale. Let's see. I, I bet it's not that bad. That's a pretty light. What kind of hinder? Yeah. We could cut the one out of your plane. But no, leave it in with the hand. Oh, don't worry about it. It's Elliot's plane. Let's go to the scale. Uh, step on it. Put it on a scale just the way it is. Look at these freaking hinges, man. Well, you're supposed to glue them in one side first. Hinges. Come on. Yeah, you know they, believe it or not, they work. Let's get some hinges in this thing, Wendy. Come on. I want this tail. Put it on a tail. Why, you can't build one that straight. Uh, uh, yeah, I want this tail, man. Come on. Let's see. What does it weigh? You need this, too. Talk is cheap. The scale doesn't lie. We'll never get it. Your tail is four and a half ounces. Let's see what this one is. Mine's not four. I don't know what mine would be. You told me it was four ounces. The tail? No, on the landing gear. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty plain. Oh, pound. How much? Looks like, uh, wait a minute here. What, you, what, what should it weigh, Wendy? Ounce and a half. Low 50s is okay. Okay, Wendy, we're at three and a half plus 50. Three and a half. What's, what's, what's 53 grams, Wendy? 54 grams. It's exactly right. It's an ounce and a half. It's actually, it's more than an ounce and a half, but it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to build it. It's doable, sure. You're going to sand a lot of this well, material off. Well, missing here. No, but you're going to sand this down. It just got busted off, yeah. This is the header for the 40? It's just cool, just yeah. yeah. Okay. That little 40 ran well. That, that's, a, that's a nice running little 40. That Brodak 40 that Yampolsky had ran very well. I was impressed how nice that ran. I have one of those in my Oriental. Yep. In a small plane, that's a great motor. When he lands, when he lands, it, it registers on a rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, uh, Bob Brookins is going to be doing a little demo for us before we leave for Maine. What's he going to do right now? Yeah. What are you doing? Okay, now you have you have none of this clear stuff up around the nose, right? What none of what's clear stuff? That that Brookins paint. No, the, uh, nothing. Okay. No. Just brought that clear on the nose. Just brought that clear. Because what I do is no. They're fighting over the windy videos already. <laughs> All right, so what? Where's Brookins? Let's get him to do a show and tell. I give him. I take him out of the garbage cans. I'll wash them out. Yeah, he. Does, it, those kimchi jars are great. No. By the way, I'm going to need some more when you get it. Why do they call them kimchi jars? Because that's what's in there. Kimchi. Kimchi. It's pickled oysters and cabbage. Pickled cat's liver or something. What are you eating that for? I'd like to watch them tonight. You guys can have them all next week. Okay. As soon as I'm...
Come yeah, on, <laughs> All right, you going, Rich? Yeah, we're gonna go. All right. Yeah, thank you. David, thanks for the week. Give me a hug, man. Good job. Work on it. I will. Thank you. Look at this. Look at this guy. Look at the landing here. The landing here. Stuka Rich. Richard the Stuka. All right. Dick Carvel. Yeah, Dick Carvel's picture. That's cool. Uh, Everett. That's Everett. Yeah, there's Will Moore with that uh, Day Glow thing he has. I like that. Electric, yeah. These are probably more of the same, just small. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'd like to present this trophy to a man truly outstanding in his field. The guy that earned Okay, you sanded it with M600, basically? Yeah. And thanks for sending me that. Thanks for sending it to me because there's no more in Jersey. Now he's with 1500. 1500, okay. And if you had 2000. Even better? Yeah, we're 2500. But you want to get all the oil off, obviously, right away. And you want to put something to cover that fuel vent as yeah. small as possible because behind the vent you never really get it right. Yeah. That's a nuisance too. Mm. It's where you stop spraying the urethane is to come back with a fairly hot reducer and try to melt that in more. Try to. Mm. But the trouble that I had is you blend it in perfectly when it's new but as time goes by. Yeah. Now, if you used uh, probably Meguiar's number three and polished it, right? That line might disappear for a while till the 3M work. Yeah, exactly. Three and but three off. days later, it comes back. Yeah. It's it's like the same thing with the fuel stains. You can get them to go away. Yeah. Three days later, they come back. Gary. Yeah. You sanded that with 1500. Okay. Yeah. There's still a lot of film there on the left side. I can see it from here. Yeah, we'll wipe it down more. You need yeah. four on steel wool. Four aught steel wool. Do you ever use any four? We have now, to go. we were going to get the end of this paint demo on video, but guess what the lovely wife said? It's we got to go. We have a reservation. We have to go. We do. Now say it the way you always. I we got to go. It's like, like now, damn it. <laughs> so we'll get to see this at some future time if Midgley's nose section is fuel proof. We'll see it in real life. Too bad Dave doesn't have a video camera. Get a picture of Dr. Michael. Why don't you leave your video camera? No, because I'm yeah. taking vacation. In yeah, Dr. Michael is the sun's performing coming. surgery. Uh, Pete, are you going to rob a bank this afternoon or what? For the amount I'm going to shoot, no matter what, that's not going to help my <laughs> I'm going to Maine. Guys, yeah, this has be been sure a fun trip. Oh, yeah, always, yeah. Believe me, when my wife says it's time to go, you know what she really means? Uh -huh. We're already 20 yeah, minutes we're late. late. We're late, we're late. Oh, we're late, start. we're late for a very car. important date. Should have a car, baby. So we didn't get to see Bob Brookins paint the plane, but we're on our way to Maine. It's raining at least this whole first day at Dave's and leaving here, we're gonna make a, a totally separate we like to share it with our friends, a separate little free bonus DVD for all our friends that enjoy sharing our little adventures. But for right now, the next part of the next part of our modeling thing is gonna be our contest at Lee and the cookout at Bill Hummel's house, which will be next Friday. Actually, this is the first place we're going to stay, Anchor Watch B&B. &B. And if you look down here, this, this is a pretty cool place. By the way, we are right on the ocean. This, and of course the rain is going to make it feel even better. But we're going to, like I said before, we're going to make a separate little uh, DVD because we're going to do a lot of shooting. There's an awful lot of cute little stuff up in Maine. If you've never been to Maine, please share it with us. This is one special place in the world, and we're going to spend the next week here. Hope you enjoy sharing it with us, and you'll get that. That'll be a separate, separate thing. But we're just going to hit some highlights on this. Some of the things that are really special, and this is really one special little place, right on the water from the third floor. You know, look out and see the boats coming in and out of the harbor. 
And we're back from five days of vacationing. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, and we're about a half hour's drive. We're in Lee, Mass. Half hour's drive from Bill Hummel's house. We're gonna go pay him a visit tonight. Assuming he's gonna be home. And in the next two days, they're gonna be a Lee Mass contest that Bill Hummel hosts every year in CDs. Now it's funny, when we left Midgley's house, it was pouring rain. And on the way back from our vacation, it was kind of rainy and cloudy and clammy. But in between, boy, we had five days. Absolute great adventures. And anybody that's gonna enjoy that, that that's a video your wife may even enjoy and tolerate. We climbed Mount Washington, among other things. Climbed Mount Cadillac. Oh, just a lot of good stuff. A lot of fun stuff in there. Anyway. And if you didn't get a copy of that video, just let me know. That's something that I think will be really fun. But this is our first trip up to Bill Hummel's house. And we're going to hope he's going to be home tonight, well, number one. That it's not interfering with his work. But we're at the Pilgrim Inn, and we're just... Karen's getting packed up and ready, and we're going to make a little jaunt down there. The old Spitfire, it's funny, he's been sitting in the car here for five days. And we ran in, actually ran into some people up in New Hampshire that were ex-control line flyers, and we gave him a DVD, and the guy is going to, uh, he paints toy soldiers. He's maybe, maybe going to make me some stuff for the model railroad, I don't know. We'll find out if we hear from him. But boy, he loved, we took the plane out and showed it to him. He was, he was just all thrilled. Brought back a lot of good memories. And I keep thinking, the thing that's special about New England this time of year, well, it's, it's throughout the whole year, it's the flowers. There are just flowers everywhere. Okay, since this is the first time we came to Bill Hummel's house, we are uh, not familiar with getting there. We have to take the directions. But oh, the mailboxes are all numbered. 260. Yes. It's probably a couple miles up the road. Look at what we see on the way to Bill's. About a block from his house. Hello. They're checking me out. They don't like Peter, Paul, and Mary. You guys like Ferraris? Ferraris, we like Porsches. Hummel. Well, if this isn't the right house, we're gonna be in trouble. We just pulled into somebody's house here. Pretty cool. Look at the flowers. Oh, getting sick of everybody having flowers. <laughs> this moment in history. Last time I saw you, you're in diapers. You're like Jim Borelli's daughter. How old are you? That's right. How old are you? 15? Nine? Oh my God. Nine? We just had it endure. Jimmy Borelli's daughter. What is she, 10? Wow. Yeah, I want to see the planes. The hell with the tour. Karen can go on tour. Now, how many did you build this year? I need honest answers now. No, oh, you got kayaks. Oh, yeah. We're Everywhere we went in Maine, kayaks, oh, kayaks. No kayak. Holy. Sarah's got a kayaks. The, the lunatics. Holy first. mackerel. No, no, no these fear. lunatics were out in the ocean no, with these kids things? No fear. We do, we do on the lakes. Not me. We do a blast. We have a good time. Yeah, guys. Got a little, little pile here. I never hear back from him. Yeah, well, he's got other things fishing and all of that stuff. Uh, maybe, he just, maybe his phone will dial out. Maybe that's the... And he was having, the last time, he was in uh, recovery, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's old heat wave. I don't even remember this one. But, but then I don't remember a lot of stuff. Yeah. Tiger 46 in that? That's what, that's what Busel had in it. Yeah. Put a Rojet 77 Put a Rojet, oh, yeah. Let's quit, yeah. Let's quit playing <laughs> with this thing. Yeah, that's yeah. cute. Uh, the stiletto, the green one, I built that from the old m and kit. Okay. And you know, the, it, it didn't come with plywood in the front, it came with the uh, sheet of what, um, poplar or something. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. And me like a, like a dope, I didn't put plywood in, so. Yeah. You I usually only do, motor, do that once a lifetime. I can't get a motor run now on it. Right, right, I know. Yeah. Yeah. We did one of Bill Rich's planes that he did these 
something in the nose and boy that thing was crazy and we hit right there we went yeah. to his house yeah. cut it open put the doublers in the tank box yeah. boop, motor run yeah this venus this is a doug grinham from australia it's an australian classic ship mm. and uh geez Wendy, it flies to nuts really you got a fox 35 in it and it's yeah. all needs it's about 41 you know what was cute i flew i flew yam polsky's chipmunk which you wouldn't oh, think yeah, it'd be yeah, that yeah. good of a plane with a brodak 40 I think it was great. He's it was, so it was thrilled great. that you got it trimmed on him. Well, it had. It's still. There. It needs one one afternoon down by Wendy's, and it'll be done. But oh, yeah. it's it's yeah. pretty good the way it is. The uh, the yellow one in the back. That's uh that's the arc. Or okay, maybe. right. Oh my right. gosh, does that fly good? For an arc, I just can't get over it. You know. So. Yeah. Anyway, come on in. Come on in the shop. Yeah, let me see a shot. I've never even been. This is the first time I've been to your house. And I, I keep hearing you got the shop to die for. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, look at this. He's got a. Die for. Die the for. only guy's got more is Brodak. Look at this. The guy's got. <laughs> guy's got more rubber gloves than me. Holy oh, mackerel. That's your package to take home with you. Yeah. How many foam wings you got here? Oh, you got more than Les Demet. Yeah, I, well, I got a lot of projects cooking. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm hip. Done. I'm hip. Um, this is nice. It's a. Little bipe. Yeah, it's the old uh, the old Sterling Newport that. Um, just, I'm, I'm redoing it for a guy. We're just taking it apart and put a real tank in there and yeah. people with the motor mounts. He just wants to see it fly again. This, I saw Woody fly his Cardinal Evolution last summer over right. one of the meets and I had to build one so I, geez, it flies great. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, I was there. trying to talk Elliot into, you know, Elliot drew the plans for this. Yeah, yeah. To, to donate it to Control Line World, and, yeah. and I think he is, but I will find out. Uh, but nice he's story. working on an article right now is I mean, yeah. there's been a hundred of these things built, and they all fly oh. good. Oh, it's just, it's they're, awesome. They're, it's silly. And what is this guy down here? Ah, uh, this is, it's my own design. This oh, that's a, a prop. 700 inch for a Tiger 60. Okay. Um, I came across some of these European type canopies. Yeah. So I just wanted to put something together. Yeah, make it look like, uh, like the, uh, y Yashenkos or whatever yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've gone through my uh, Eastern European influence here. This is the KA-10. This is the one that... Uh, yeah, Dixon Kostnikov, has these. Kostnikov. Yeah, well, Dixon had one like this that flew pretty yeah. good, a KA-10, yeah. yeah. KA-10. So we're gonna... Hey, we can get the fancy landing gear on it. Yeah, we'll give it cool. A try. We can, hey! We can come in this way. If you pay, you can come right in. <laughs> oh, hey, Don. Holy mackerel, Don Herdman arrives. Hey, come on in. See this whole crew. Hey, you guys have to come this way. You can go up... Oh, it's all right. You go up around. Well, I'm taking a kayak. One of the guys. We're going. Hey, Don. How you doing? We're going kayak racing. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Having an airplane. How are you? Kiss the camera. Kiss the camera. Oh my God! Oh my God! All the big fish are in the tank tonight. Hey, I drove past. Hey, I miss your audience. All the big fish. I drove past Stefano Mechanical today. That's my my nephew. He's got six airplanes in the works. See, my wife. My wife would. Would say this is a poor use of space. <laughs> not to me, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd figure out how to use this. What? Wow, look, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Flight streak, oh, yeah. big flight streak. Yeah, I got it from my guy over there with the camera. Oh, he's got really? the plans for it. Yeah. Oh, he's got them, okay. Yeah. Got New York Central. Oh, geez, Don. I, got, I got way too many stories, you know. Another, another guy with good looking wood. <laughs> he's looking for wood down in the uh, hobby shop. Oh, yeah. He's like, there you go. And, and what we all desire a workbench. Yeah, this is quite a shop. Look at all the foam cords. Oh, yeah. So, what do you think? 50 50? Where's your mom? Upstairs. Oh, they're upstairs? Okay. I didn't say hello to her yet. He's got the Tom Morris. Nobody has is safe with an iron railing in That's Alabama. Right. All the right. people in Alabama fall down the stairs. Tom cuts their railing down and makes these. You want to see my Super Tiger drawer? Yeah. Nobody ever has enough Super Tigers. No. Right? Those are all Super Tigers. Wow. 60s and 46s. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're not going to serve you uh, poorly, believe me. Oh, man. I just love You know what? 100 years from now, that drawer will be worth more than a Ferrari. <laughs> I had great luck with the Tigers. Yeah. Have. Every, what do you, everybody has. You know, it's just been. How many did I have? I got like 12 top, oh, yeah. top yeah. fives or whatever. Yeah. And I'm going to sit and bad mouth them? No oh, way. You can't. You can't. This is, a, this is a JD Falcon. Is that one that's got to be from Niebuhr's kit, this is right? Niebuhr's kit, yeah. I, uh, okay. Geez, it's light as a feather. It's the best yeah, I heard a lot of guys complain it's made out of light wood. Oh, now, John D never made anything out of light wood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, feel this. There's nothing to it. I mean, I didn't. It's, it's all kit wood. 
Yeah. And I Niebuhr did a nice job with the kit. Whoa. Great job with the kit. And I've had... Um, you got low 40s when you're oh, done. Oh, yeah. I've had good luck with the, the dye. The, you know, the... the, the hit right, the hit right, list. right. But Noel tried, has a bunch of them with that. I tried a different color and it came out pink on me, so... Uh, you know what? You <laughs> know stuck I, with it I just did it's it. It's like grown that red to fades. Yeah? I added yellow to the clear. Yeah. And yellow... I'm a man here. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to make it fit on this fuse. It really doesn't want to fit, but I'm... Uh, darn it, I'm going to make it fit one way or the other because I bought that cat. That, so that's a key rule for models. Never throw anything away. Throw There's always room for more junk it's in the house. looking good so far. Well, <laughs> yeah. But i got no way to attach it now. That's the, uh, you know, I'm gonna, it's gonna have oh, the, you'll think of something. What's wrong with the tech? Oh. See, this is something you never have to worry about seeing in my house is an exercise yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. I believe if you want to exercise, sand and buff. I'll never have to worry about looking like this when I get old. Maybe it's a woman. Ew. Want to tell some of these bodybuilding women look like men. You'll never have to worry about seeing this in my house. This is what you'll see in my house. More balsa wood. Unbelievable. What a seller. Wow. Bill, I am impressed. If, if you could figure out how many wings, and by the way, Bill Hummel builds planes for people. So if anybody's interested in a construction project, call him up. He'll build you a cardinal. Build you something, I don't know. You're gonna fly this weekend? That's a good one. All right, we'll have to get that on video. <laughs> What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Was it? What's with the pants? What is with the pants? What's with it? What? You know, Pam is always looking up their membership. We just allow dogs to join. How to do it. <laughs> so this is Bill's backyard, and we, tra we already measured it off. We get rid of the pool, get rid of the garden, and we just squeeze a circle in here. Everybody needs, he's, he's got a circle real close to his house that he can use, though. He's cheating. So what do you think? What do you think? This is the back of his deck, back of the house. Sweetheart, how old are you totally? Now, I know kids lie about their age. To get driver's license, does your father let you drive yet? Yes. <laughs> Only in parking lots. She does. <laughs> Only on the weekend, right? <laughs> you have your own snowmobile and kayak. She lies about eight. Oh, we got a little donation of pictures here. Look at this. Now I know Bill made a, uh, a copy of this at one time. I don't know if still got it or not. Harold, this is Harold Price's. Boy, this was a beautiful model in real life. I love that wing. Remember his defiant? Yeah. Do you know? Oh, you don't have to uh, picture of it. That's okay. We put it on camera anyway. As we're all sitting out here eating, some deer came in Bill's backyard, and they just got the dog ran them off. Did you chase? Did you chase those deer away? He now. You prefer Bob Hunt videos? Come on, tell me the truth. No. How'd you feel after watching the last Bob Hunt video? Come on, tell me the truth. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, liked it that much, did you? <laughs> you got a driver's license? Who is it? Whose person is this? Is that you? Yeah. Before you were on drugs? Look at him now. <laughs> here's, here's your mind on drugs, and here it is not on drugs. Perfect size. I'm impressed. So you went from selling Windy Belcranks at Brodax. How much money you make that weekend? About like 30 bucks. Oh, well. <laughs> How much did you make the week you didn't work for me? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you see a, pa a pattern here? <laughs> the dog stole Woody's food. He just jumped up, took the food. Woody didn't see it coming. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Homo? He stole my cookie. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> ah! He took my fingers off. What the hell's that all about? Woody, show this dog a, who the boss is. Give me a stick or something.
<laughs> Holy, look, this dog took it right out. I didn't even know he was coming. He's like a pink. Oh, yeah. Watch, Woody's going to lose that cookie. Watch. <laughs> Woody's bullshitting. He's going to lose the cookie. Oh, my God. Check this out. We're out on a deck, and here they come. Dum, 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 dum. Hey. Hello, pretty boy. A girl? I guess it's a girl. Whoops. Well, well, Whoops. That answers that. Who didn't put the odor on today?